Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today I have this electrostatic motor to show you. I have built a couple of them in the past. This is just a different version. And as you can see, it is a simple construction. It is made mostly with PVC pipes. You can see here the two electrodes pipes with copper tape around. You can also use uh, aluminum tape or even a kitchen aluminum. The, the difference using aluminum from your kitchen is that you need to apply glue around the pipe and the tape is easier to apply. But it works in any of the two cases. And also we have the rotor with four sections of tape around. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. The rotor is a PVC pipe with two caps made of wood, and they have a hole in the center where this plastic tube is inserted. This is from a pen. The rotor is magnetically suspended, as I also made with previous motors. We have here at the bottom a neodymium magnet and another neodymium magnet in the base. They have the same polarity so that they repel each other. And here I have a plastic tube is inserted in the needle and it kind of floats on the magnetic field and the friction is very low. These electrostatic motors generate a uh, very little torque so we need to reduce the friction to a minimum. And also the base is plexiglass and the reason for that is that we need a material that is a very good insulator in order to reduce the leaks of high voltage and uh, well I live in a very humid place and if I use another material for example wood if the wood is humid it becomes actually a conductor under high voltage and the motor will not work so I am using plexiglass for the base the electrostatic motor needs several kilovolts in order to work Therefore, I am using this little high voltage power supply. Uh, it is a Chinese supply, very cheap, but it generates between 10 and 15,000 volts, more than enough to make the motor work. And we will connect. Oh, you need a uh, DC current for these motors. They will not work with AC. And you will connect the high voltage output to the two electrodes. Okay, I have connected everything. My lab power supply connected to the high voltage power supply. It needs uh, between 3 and 4 volts in order to work. And the high voltage output is connected to each of the electrodes of the electrostatic motor. So let's see the motor working.
So as you could see, it works pretty well at around 300 revolutions per minute. And how the motor works? Well, the concept is, uh, is, is simple. Suppose that it is, this is the positive electrode and the negative. And as you can see, there is a wire here and another wire on the other side that touches the rotor. So we have, for example, in this position, we have the positive electrode and this strip is also positive. The other electrode is negative, so there is an attraction, electrostatic attraction between this positive strip and the negative pole, and the rotor will move in this way. But at this point, there is no contact with the copper strip, but the motor still rotates because of its inertia. And in the other side, exactly the same happens, but with the opposite direction. Now this is negative, negative, and positive, and there is an attraction between these two that makes the motor move in this way. So we have two forces, one here to the right and the other to the left. So they generate a torque that makes the rotor turn in this direction. So there you have it, simple electrostatic motor. Hope you liked the video. If that is the case, please visit my Patreon page. Thank you and see you in the next video.